Ready, set, go. The Hammond River Angling Association will show you everything you want to know about Atlantic salmon red counts. In this presentation, you'll learn about what is a red and why we count them, where to find reds and what to look for, how to host a volunteer red count survey, and other methods of locating reds. We survey for salmon reds to provide us with information on salmon populations. This will help inform us on how many salmon have returned to spawn each year. The word red comes from a Scottish word, meaning to make clean or tidy. Reds are vibrant and clear of any aquatic vegetation. During the spawn, female salmon, often called hens, will use their powerful tail to disturb gravel, creating an indent. Once the hen is satisfied with her work, she will deposit her eggs into the nest, or red. The male salmon will then join the female at the red and will distribute sperm to fertilize the eggs. Once the mating is complete, the female will once again use her tail to add more gravel over top of the eggs, thus completing the red. Where do we find reds? Atlantic salmon will make their reds in riffles. Riffles are excellent habitat for reds as they will provide oxygen to the eggs. Atlantic salmon will not build their reds in deep pools or rapids. Atlantic salmon will not spawn in silt, boulder, or bedrock they need gravel or small cobble substrate to build their reds. Temperature is a key factor in spawning. Atlantic salmon spawn in the fall not in the spring, summer, or winter. They usually begin spawning when the water temperature reaches 5 to 8 degrees Celsius. Once the hen has found a suitable area of gravel, she will face upstream and begin using her tail to displace the gravel, and this is usually called a pit. This disturbed gravel will form a mound behind her. Once she is satisfied, she will deposit her eggs for fertilization. Once fertilization is complete, she will once again use her tail to add additional gravel, covering the eggs, creating a pillow. The clean gravel area that remains is often called the tail. Reds are usually located in water depths of 15-75 cm. You do not have to go into deep water to find reds. If water levels are low, reds may be clumped together in the middle of the channel. Under normal water levels, reds may be dispersed throughout, including near the riverbanks. Occasionally, you will find partial reds, or scratches, partial pot slash no pillow, the hen may have been interrupted during making of the red, or not suitable substrate. The pit is usually relative to the size of the fish the larger the pit, the larger the fish. Now that we know what reds are, what they look like, and how to find them, let's learn how to prepare and host your volunteer red count event. Let's get ready for your event. Perform brief red survey in advance of your event. Not sure where to go? Start with your salmon pool maps. Does the area below the pool and above the riffle have gravel substrate? Have you found juvenile salmon during electrofishing or positive environmental DNA in nearby tributaries? Which areas in your watershed offer cold water refugia? Salmon will also spawn in brooks if they are cold water brooks and there is decent gravel substrate. Rank your sites as high, medium, and low priority for survey. You won't be able to survey a whole watershed in one day. Then take your sites and rank them as easy, medium, and hard while taking into account access, parking, cell service, and terrain. Select sites from the lower, mid, and upper portions of your watershed to cover as much area as possible. Prepare your data sheets and your sign-in sheets you'll want to keep track of all your volunteers. Now promote your event, all are welcome. Before your event, you will want to recruit some experienced team leads. Team leads will be provided with a map of their designated stretch, a GPS for recording reds, and they should have a first aid kit, extra blanket, and extra clothes in their car for emergencies. Bring along garbage bags for shoreline cleanup too, and don't forget to take pictures. The team lead should always lead the survey to ensure volunteers are not walking on or through reds. 
Team leads are also responsible to ensure all their team members are accounted for. So it is now the day of your event. You will want to have a designated time and place to start, where all volunteers and team leads will meet before heading to their survey stretches. You will want to gauge your volunteers group them according to experience or age, and assign them to stretches that are the best fit for them, remember, you organize the stretches as easy, medium, and hard for a reason. Assign a team lead to each group and designate a stretch for each team. Allow time for the team lead and their team members to discuss and exchange phone numbers before they head out to their stretch. Go over basic safety The water is generally very cold, and fast there is no need to wade in above your knees, and go slow and steady. Be sure to have a set time for all teams and their team leads to return to the congregation point for some free food and to discuss their results. There are other alternatives to on-foot red count surveys. You can also use a low-flying drone, however, the footage can be difficult to spot reds if there is too much glare from the sun. You can also survey with snorkels, provided you have the proper wetsuit gear. Do not perform red counts in the rain it is too difficult to spot the reds, and you may be walking on them. If the water has low visibility due to rain the previous day, postpone event until water has better clarity. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the Hammond River Angling Association. We would like to thank our funders, the New Brunswick Wildlife Trust Fund and the Foundation for Conservation of the Atlantic Salmon. Most importantly thank you to all the volunteers who keep making this annual event one of our favorite times of the year.